When will NASA send the first astronauts to Mars? This is one of the most commonly asked questions in terms of modern day space exploration. And it turns out NASA already has a three phase plan of how they want to get there. So what have we been able to accomplish so far in these three phases? What do we still have to do? And what has the recent administration changed to make it a little bit difficult or a little bit easier to get to the red planet? Let's talk about that. So this whole time frame begins in 2008 when NASA initiated the Journey to Mars program. And this program focused on breaking the major challenge of sending humans to Mars into three separate phases. And within each phase are smaller goals that we'd be able to meet in order to show that we have the capability to safely land someone on the surface of Mars. In addition, as the shirt probably can tell, this video is only looking at NASA's time frame and not looking into SpaceX and what their plan is to colonize Mars. Let's go ahead and get started with the first phase, which is the Earth Reliant phase, which is supposed to go from now into the mid 2020s. So underneath this phase, we have three separate goals. The first one being the operation of the International Space Station until or through the year 2024. The second one being the commercial development of spacecraft in low earth orbit. And the third one being understanding life support systems in deep space around earth. So first let's look at the International Space Station. Both NASA and the Russian Space Agency or the Roscosmos are legally responsible for the modules that they have at the space station as of right now. And NASA has had contracts with Boeing that have said that they would continue operation or continue hardware development until 2020. However, with the expectation that they would be able to continue working on it until 2028. There have also been discussions between NASA and Roscosmos to continue operation until 2028. Therefore, it is expected that we will be able to meet this criteria of having the International Space Station until 2024 or beyond. So let's go on to the next goal improved development of commercial spacecraft in low earth orbit. Now, since 2008, there's been a great increase in how well private companies have been able to control spacecraft in low earth orbit. With major launch vehicle companies such as SpaceX, Blue Origin, Scaled Composite, the Spaceship Company, Rocket Lab, all of which aiming to lower the cost to get to low earth orbit. And these are just the major launch vehicle names. There are also companies such as Astrobotic, Planetary Resources, and OneWeb that are trying to use this cheaper access to space as a platform for potential problem capabilities, whether that being improving internet, taking images from space daily, or even trying to mine asteroids. So I would also say that the development of commercial spacecraft in low Earth orbit has greatly improved since 2008. Therefore, we've also met that goal. So now let's go on to the last goal of how system in a deep space environment. Now NASA has put a lot of focus on this in the last 10 years with their work on the Orion Space Module. Now the Orion Space Module is capable of taking four astronauts beyond low Earth orbit, closer to the moon or even beyond into the deep space around Earth. However, one of the major issues is that the capabilities of the Orion capsule go along with the Space Launch System or the launch vehicle that NASA is currently under development with. This is an issue because the space launch system isn't expected to have its first test launch until 2019 or maybe even 2020, with the first manned mission not expected to happen until 2023. If NASA was able to launch a manned mission by 2023, that would meet the goal, because the time frame ends in the mid-2020s and the main idea is showing that we could have a life support system in deep space. It might not be a long duration mission, maybe just a week or two. However, it does show that we have the technological capabilities. Ideally, we would wanna be able to understand how astronauts react in a deep space environment, but also how they react over long exposure to the high radiation in that environment. Which leads us to the next phase. This phase is called the proving ground. And this is supposed to go from 2018, this year, to 2030. This phase is also made up of three main goals. These are having the ability to send manned missions to cislunar space or in orbits or the space around the moon, also testing life support systems around the moon or in deep space, therefore we would be able to see how long they could live and eventually trying to have them out there for up to a year. Lastly, the idea is that we'd be able to collect a boulder from an asteroid, put it in orbit around the moon, 
and then send humans to go and mine it. Therefore, we could see how well robots and humans can integrate with one another in terms of developing a mission. So as I mentioned in the Earth Reliant phase, not having the capabilities of the Space Launch System or the Orion capsule are basically going to hold us back in terms of whether or not we can go to cislunar space. Therefore, the entire first goal of having the capability to send manned missions is based off of whether or not we have the SLS or the Orion capsule. Therefore, that one is currently not completed. So let's go on to the next goal, the verification of deep space life support systems. This is crucial in any mission to Mars because it's going to be a three-year mission and it's going to be high exposure to radiation. Now we have had a US astronaut in space for over a year. Astronaut Scott Kelly was in space for 396 consecutive days aboard the ISS. However, this is not the same as deep space. For example, if we took a space station in cislunar space, the average radiation they're exposed to is one and a half times that that they are on the International Space Station. So therefore, we have not met the second goal either. The last part of the proving ground phase is the asteroid redirect mission, also known as ARM. And the plan for this, as I mentioned before, was to take a boulder off of a nearby asteroid, put it in orbit around the moon, then be able to send a manned mission to that boulder to be able to mine it and see what its makeup is. This is incredibly important because not only do we have the manned aspect of the mission, but we also have the robotic aspect of the mission that is responsible for getting the boulder and sending it into lunar orbit. However, this mission actually was canceled in December of 2017. Therefore, this goal is probably never going to be met, or at least not within the time frame that they expected it to. So in terms of the proving ground phase, we're not there yet. However, we're still at the beginning of the time frame that they set. Therefore, over the next five to 10 years, we could definitely see some of these goals be achieved. Probably not the asteroid redirect mission, but some of the other ones I can definitely see happening. So now let's go on to the last phase of the Journey to Mars program. This one being the Earth Independent Phase, which is thought to go from now, or when they originally developed in 2008 the program, up until the early 2030s. So this phase actually has four main goals. These being the ability to send a robotic mission to the surface of Mars, having the capability of entry, descent, landing, and in situ resource utilization, being able to send a robotic mission to Mars and return a sample back to Earth. And the last one is having a manned mission to orbit Mars. So the Earth in phase is packed with a lot of information, but let's start out with the easiest one, being able to send a robotic mission to the surface of Mars. We've successfully done this since 2008 with the Curiosity rover, and even before this program was developed with the Phoenix lander landing on Mars. However, we still have the InSight mission coming up and the 2020 rover that is planned to be launched in 2020. Therefore, we've already met this first goal of the ability to send robotic missions to the surface of Mars. So the next goal is rather interesting, having entry, descent, landing, and in-situ resource collection under one umbrella. Now I'll get to that last one in a second, but let's first look at entry, descent, and landing. Now if we talk about being able to land on the surface with the robotic mission, again we've already successfully done this with the Curiosity rover and the Phoenix lander, the upcoming InSight mission, and the 2020 rover. The Curiosity rover used an aero braking technique which eventually led to retro rockets which would be a power descent until it went into a sky crane mode. The Phoenix lander and the upcoming InSight mission which will land later this year basically had the same aero braking technique and then used a power descent to get to the surface. And the 2020 rover expected to use the same platform that the Curiosity rover did. Therefore, if you look at entry, descent, and landing from just a robotic perspective, we have definitely met that. We've met that multiple times and we will continue to meet that over the next few years. However, if you look at it from a manned capsule perspective, NASA is nowhere close to those capabilities. The Orion capsule, which is currently people into deep space, has no power descent whatsoever. It's only an arrow breaking technique for when it returns back to Earth. Therefore, they develop an incredibly new system or upper stage to be able to land on Mars and also include the capabilities of then taking off again, which is not something that they are currently working on. Again, I'm just talking about NASA in this discussion and not what other companies might be doing. So, 
the stage where it technically has successfully entered and landed robotic missions on the surface, but it doesn't have the capabilities to land humans yet. So now let's get to that weird one that I mentioned earlier, the in situ resource collection. This is another name for collecting resources on Mars that can then be used for astronauts. This is commonly referred to things such as propellant, water, air, and potentially food that we would be able to grow or obtain on Mars and then use to keep our astronauts alive. Now there are in the future, for the 2020 rover, there's an experiment called MOXIE that will be using electrolysis to convert the carbon dioxide atmosphere into oxygen. There's a previous episode where we talk about creating oxygen on Mars, so if you're more interested in that, be sure to check it out. So this part of the goal as of right now has not been met since it hasn't been tested on Mars. However, I expect that near 2021 or 2022 we'll probably get the results of the experiment and therefore be able to show that we are able to create oxygen on Mars. The Mars Sample Return Mission, and hence the name, it will be a robotic mission that will go to Mars, land on the surface, collect some of the regolith or soil, and then send it back to Earth to then be analyzed by scientists in laboratories here on Earth. This would be a very important mission because it would be the first time that we actually successfully launched something off of Mars and then returned it back to Earth. Now the time frame for this specific goal is to have it done by 2030, which could be cutting it rather close in terms of NASA and how long it takes for them to develop a mission. It takes them a little over 10 years and we're getting close to that 10 year time frame. However, there have been proposals and options represented by JPL Therefore, we haven't met this goal, however, there are options in the future that could potentially meet it before the time frame runs out in 12 years. So the very last goal for the program to Mars is to send a manned mission to orbit Mars. I'm not really sure why it says orbit Mars, mainly because any mission to the red planet is going to have to be a three-year mission due to the orbital mechanics of when we leave and when we return. Therefore, I expect that this also means that they're landing on Mars. And the time frame for this is by the early 2030s when we're supposed to depart. There are around 14 years to when NASA originally expected a mission to Mars to occur. However, this is likely to have a lot of pushback, mainly because of the continued development of the space launch system, having to develop something to be able to land on the surface of Mars and bring us back, as well as other capabilities such as whether or not we can live in these high radiation environments and what we would need to survive over that entire time frame. So the journey to Mars plan lasted from 2008 up until 2017 with recent focuses in the administration changing towards a more lunar approach. Now what does that mean? Now if we look at NASA's proposed budget for 2019, a little bit over 50% of the entire budget is looking to go into cislunar space or the current advancement of space exploration around the moon. This budget change is great for anything within the proving ground section because we'll be able to understand how astronauts react and survive in a deep space environment. However, with all this focus going towards the moon, there might not be as much information going to Mars or robotic missions to Mars in terms of how we could learn about entry, descent, and landing for a larger capsule to send people there. However, there is a bit of controversy in terms of how much we should allocate to understanding cislunar space. As I mentioned before, being able to understand the deep space aspect, the radiation, and how we can survive further away from Earth would be great in terms of astronauts reenacting a trip to Mars. However, other people believe that a space station around the moon could be a 10 plus year endeavor that would eventually push back our first missions to the red planet. Therefore, we have this balance between understanding how much we really need to focus on the moon versus how much we need to focus on having the technology to get to Mars. So according to the Journey to Mars program that NASA developed in 2008, we should be looking at the first manned mission to Mars leaving in the early 2030s. However, due to some of the pushbacks of the space launch system, some of the technological changes, and maybe a couple things holding us back, we could be looking at closer to the 2040s or maybe even the 2050s. Now a lot of you have probably been thinking this entire time, well what about SpaceX and their capability to provide launch vehicles or even to just go to Mars themselves? And that is what I'm going to talk about in the next video, SpaceX timeline and what will be realistic in terms of what they'll be able to accomplish. So what year do you think that NASA is going to send the first manned mission to Mars? And do you think that having a space station around the moon could potentially push that time frame back? 
Let me know in the comments below, I'd love to see what you think. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and consider subscribing. If you didn't enjoy this video, I'd love to hear your feedback. But anyway, thank you for watching, I hope to see you in the next one.